That night, the children found it hard to get to sleep. Ma had to return to the city the next morning as each day she was losing pay. There was all the borrowed money to pay back now, as well as the money to send Nono each month for food, school, and all the other expenses. Ma was clearly worried about Dineo not getting enough milk. The nurse had repeated what the doctor had told Ma about Dineo needing milk, fruit, and vegetables. But we work very hard and earn very little, Ma had said with a sigh as she cuddled Dineo before putting her down to sleep. Tiro had said good night, but lay thinking about the boy on the orange farm. He wondered if he himself was old enough to go and find work. But he knew Ma wouldn't agree. Hadn't she said the children working the farm should be in school? Then he thought of Dumi and the bit in the letter about studying in another country. Studying what? Tiro wondered. He would ask Naledi tomorrow. Tomorrow he would also remake his wire car and try out Jonas and Paul's design. Putting out his arm, he touched the nail. It was lovely knowing she was there again. If only Ma didn't have to go away now. Naledi lay awake too, listening to the murmuring voices of Nono, Manwane, and Ma. It was so comforting to hear them all together, but tomorrow night Ma's voice would be missing. Naledi buried her head in her arms, forcing back her tears. Crying wouldn't help. She couldn't imagine Grace crying and Grace had to look after her younger brothers and the house all by herself most of the time. Yet, Grace had said things in a way that made you feel better, like when she had said, we're pushed all over the place, but it won't be like that forever. But when would they see Grace again? It occurred to Naledi that at least they could write to each other. Tomorrow, she must ask Ma to find out Grace's address. Then a new idea came to her. Wasn't it possible that in her own school there were people like Grace? Naledi had overheard bits of conversations amongst the older students, although she had never taken much notice before. But why shouldn't she begin to talk to them and become friends, even if she was a little younger? If they heard she had been to Johannesburg, they could be interested, she was sure. What was it Ma had said about the children in Soweto? That they didn't want to learn just to be servants? Oh yes, they were right. All of a sudden, lying there in the dark, It became so clear to Naledi. It wasn't just their schools they were talking about. It was her school, too. All those lessons and writing letters for jobs as servants, always writing how good they were at cooking, cleaning, washing, gardening, always ending with yours obediently. Naledi had never thought about it before tonight, but never, never had she written about wanting to be Say, a doctor. Yes, that's what she'd like to be. Imagine how useful it would be if she became a doctor, especially in their own village. She could even look after her own family. For a few moments, Naledi lay imagining herself in a long white coat in a bright room with shining cupboards all around her, like the cupboards where Ma worked. Then something jarred. She saw in her mind someone bringing her a little baby. The mother looked like the young woman in the queue at the hospital, and the baby was so thin that its little rib bones pushed up from under its skin. The mother was clearly poor and had no food for her child. Where would she, the doctor, get food for the baby? When she opened her shining cupboards, they were empty. Naledi then began to imagine a whole line of mothers and grandmothers bringing weak, thin little babies up to her. What could she do? For a while, she felt the tears pressing on her eyelids again. No, she wouldn't give in to tears. It was just that she couldn't work this aloud by herself. Well, school would be starting again in a week. That wasn't long. At break time, she would go where the older students usually sat chatting. Just wait till they heard where she and Tiro had been. Naledi turned over and stroked Dineo's cheek, making her sister smile a little in her sleep. How strange, thought Naledi. If Dineo hadn't been so terribly ill, she and Tiro would never have made the journey to get Ma. It had saved Dineo, she was sure. <laughs>